everybody, Jeff here, and welcome to Battle of the Agents. This is a series where you, the viewer, votes on ranking the featured agent from one through five stars and telling me your reason why. I then take the average rank of stars you voted on and throw that up on a leaderboard with the rest of the agents we've made a video on so far to see who has the highest ranking. In today's video, I asked you all to rate KO in a community post, and 10,000 of you voted, but you also left over 100 comments for me to to choose from on your reasons why you chose the rank you did for KO. Now, when you vote, you can choose your rank by any means you want. Could be gameplay, lore, design, voice acting, whatever. Let's get right into the poll. So it looks like 2% of you guys gave KO one star or an F tier, and I'm honestly blown away. Personally, in no world does KO deserve one star, but like, hey, I guess this is why we have democracy. Next, only 1% of the votes were for two stars. 10% of the votes were for giving KO three stars, while while the vast majority of you guys voted for four stars for KO at 61%, which equals to 6,100 of the 10,000 votes. And then 26% of you gave KO the highest rating you could at five stars. Now, if we take the average of the ranking of all the votes, that gives us an average of 4.16 stars, which is actually lower than Omen, the first video of the Battle Agents that we ever made, which you guys voted average for Omen of 4.36 stars. Now, when we take a look at the leaderboard so far, this actually really, really surprised me. I would have bet money that KO would have scored better than Omen. My mind was honestly blown when I added it all up. Well, there's only one way we can find out why. Let's read the comments you all left. But before we do, real quick fam, a word from today's sponsor. Let's face it, everyone. Information is one of the biggest keys to victory in Valorant. I have a tool to help you out with that so much. Valorant Tracker. Valorant Tracker, today's sponsor, is a fantastic software that gives you so many stats you've never had access to before. Especially how you can see the skill level of not only all your teammates, but your enemies as well in real time in a game. Right off the bat in a match, you can determine which players you need to look out for and target them. Also, it works amazingly on tracking your own stats. Everything from what your best map is for comp and unrated, what your best weapons are, which agent you have the best KD and win percentage with, and so much more. You can set it up to automatically launch when you open Valorant. It hardly uses like any CPU power at all. And Valorant Tracker is built on top of Overwolf, so you know it's extremely trustworthy. If you want to check it out, I highly recommend you do. It is actually amazing. I use it literally every single match. Use my link in the description or the pinned comment to download Valorant Tracker for free. And thank you so, so much for sponsoring today's video. Now for the top rated comment, Kicking off the video comes to us from Mary C and she says his powers and lore are great when he says you are powerless uh, I did awful job there in the blackmailer capture audio drama is one of the coolest things I've ever heard You are powerless Does move get them up now Target secured he's down we got her. He is four stars for me for one reason. Why is he wearing pants? This implies things I don't want to go into. I'm sure there is fan art of the possibilities, but don't look that up at work. Bro, what? Oh my God, this comment takes you on so many turns. While yes, possibly the coolest moment in all of Valorant with KO dropping out of the helicopter to catch Fade is badass, but why is he wearing pants? Oh no. And why is Chance's reply saying, I think he's packing, not gonna lie? Oh, huh? what? Then Tropical Sushi replies to that with the Robussi. Oh, no, God. Maybe I should scrap this series. I can't handle you guys. All right, moving on. We have another comment from Giga2, and they say, By the way, you wrote Omen. I gave KO four stars because I love his lore. Him being from another reality slash time just makes him so interesting. I also like his suppressing abilities since he is the only one who can do that. For five stars, I think he should be useful on more maps, but surely for stars for me okay i know i know i messed up and accidentally put omen's name in the poll when i was writing it but i do agree that ko's lore is honestly one of the best in valorant being from an alternate universe really is so cool like how our timeline is the alphaverse and omega's timeline is the omegaverse i wonder what the name of ko's universe is where radiance took 
took over and he was manufactured to save them. But I can't also agree on your rating of four stars for his lack of versatility on every map. While KO is actually extremely good and in really well coordinated teams can be broken, you're right. On some maps, you're better off going with other initiators for your average and even above average players. Our next comment comes from Gabriel Adamson Kelk, I believe, and he says, I rate KO five stars. I have played him since he came out and have never changed since. Plus, the theory that he's the consciousness of Brimstone's dead friend is really cool, and his powers are unlike any other. No other character in any work of fiction has the special ability of power suppression. That's why I love him and why he's my number one agent. So there are two reasons why I chose this comment. One, there is a massive theory that most of the community believes and has strong evidence to be true that Brimstone's best friend going up is actually Chaos Consciousness. As you can see with photos in Brimstone's office, he grew up with a very good friend since he was a kid through Baltimore's fire department and into the military. It's strongly evidence with Fade's blackmail dossier to Brim that his good friend Tariq Porter died. Many people believe that in Chaos timeline during the Radiant Wars, Tariq died again again while fighting and somehow his consciousness was uploaded into KO when he was made. That could lead to why KO and Brim have such a strong bond. But the other reason why I chose this comment was since you said that KO is the only character in fiction to suppress or nullify enemies abilities. I'm sorry man but that's just not true. A quick google search can show that there are hundreds and hundreds of examples of nullifying abilities in other works of fiction. There are like literally 30 examples in Pokemon alone. So other than that, great comment, bro. Up next is a long but well worth comment from Sky, and they say, I'm giving KO five stars because of the following reasons. Lore, KO plays a very important role in lore as he brings in whole new theme of Radiant Wars. If it wasn't for him, we would only have Alpha Earth versus Omega Earth. But addition of KO brings in whole lot of twist and turn in lore story. Gameplay, his gameplay is quite unique. He's the only agent who gets buffed every time other agent is buffed due to his unique ability to suppress agents. And he Sentinel getting buffed is indirectly KO getting buffed as he can suppress whole Sentinel ability with this free ability and make them useless. KO is already seen so much in pro play and with time it only increases. There's two types of play style in Valorant. One is gunplay oriented, other is ability oriented. When they need abilities it more or less becomes like CSGO where precise aim and gunplay is important. When they buff abilities this is where KO gets upper hand as he can suppress all abilities in one go. He will be the meta. Design and voice lines. I love how he expresses his feelings via small screen on his face. Attention to detail on design is excellent and has cocky interactions with all Valorant agents and is friendly with everyone. It's extraordinary to see how they gave robot behavior. Love the voice lines too. Love when others mock him and call him toaster, etc. Overall, solid five out of five. Okay, so one thing I really wanted to highlight in this comment, which I saw a common theme with other comments you all left, is I think a lot of ex CSGO players that now play Valorant really really enjoy how KO turns off abilities and makes the enemies rely on gun skill to win while they're suppressed. I didn't play much CSGO like I think I have like an hour on it to be honest but it looks like CS is a game that is much more about aim and mechanics while Valorant seems to focus more on utility and team play coordination with said utility. Now don't get me wrong Valorant still has a big emphasis on hitting your shots but you can only get so good at killing enemies with your weapons. What really separates good teams and players from great teams and players in Valorant Valorant is how well they use their utility and coordination with their team. So ex CSGO players really do enjoy when they get back to their roots and focus just on gun skill by using a KO to nullify their enemies abilities. This really was a common thing I saw in the comments. Also I pretty much agree with everything else in your comments guy and I can see why you gave him 5 stars. Alright next up is a comment from Awesauce and they say instant 5 stars. A very unique and awesome design, cool abilities, one of the best lore slash origin story in the entire game. and is hilarious in the Valorant cinematic trailers. How could you not love him? I do agree. How can you not love him? He is such a sassy and hilarious agent and honestly one of the funniest in Valorant. They did an amazing job in the warm cinematic giving him a ton of personality in it. Next is a perfect way to wrap up the video and sum up KO perfectly commented by MLGC the Great. I'd say five stars. The voice actor did a brilliant job and the effects placed on top afterwards to make it sound robotic work well to not take too much of that human voice 
away and from the warm cinematic we can tell a sort of personality rather than being the dry lifeless character his lore is amazing and i think is the story with the most potential in stopping the raiding wars from happening in his new timeline as far as gameplay goes i think that having the ability to suppress enemies is never a bad thing pretty good all around really yes i do agree that Kao's lore has some of the biggest potential to expand upon in valorant what exactly will he do when it's likely reyna will start to rise to power and recruit radiance to her cause in our timeline it looks like riot is already underway telling the story so we'll just have to wait and see on what's next everyone follow me on twitch and twitter links below in description if you enjoyed the video then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to notifications if you're new now with all that being said jippy out